Let's try to make a perfect block letter J using the shape and pen tools. Remember, the first step to creating anything with vectors is determining the minimum number of points you need to create your shape. Vectors are perfect, humans are not. Every time you click with the pen tool to create a new anchor point, you're creating a new opportunity to be wrong. Limit those opportunities by creating as few anchor points as possible and using the shape tool whenever possible. So let's look at the capital letter J. How can we break this down geometrically and make it easy on ourselves? If we think logically, we realize a block letter J is nothing more than two rectangles and two circles. We can use a rectangle for the crossbar and the stem, and the bottom loop of the J can be made with circles that we open up by deleting the top anchor point. Then all we have to do is connect everything to complete our shape. So how many total points is a block capital J? Keep in mind we're always looking for the absolute minimum. We have the four corners in the crossbar, plus the two where it meets the stem. Remember the loop is made with two circles, which are always four points. We're deleting the top anchor points to open them up, so that gives us six more for a total of 12. No more, no less. Create a new document that is eight inches wide by four inches tall. The resolution really doesn't matter, so keep the size down. Let's use 72 pixels per inch. Set your background contents to white because it'll be a lot easier to see our paths. Let's begin. I'm going to use a grid to help increase my accuracy. To turn on grids, either go to the view menu and select show, then check grid, or simply hit the control and apostrophe keyboard shortcut. I also want to make sure snap to grid is turned on because it'll be a big help as well. Go back to the view menu, make sure snap is checked, then go into the snap to sub menu and make sure grid is checked. I'm going to start by creating a crossbar. I'm going to make it two blocks tall. Next, I'm going to make my stem, making it two blocks wide to maintain consistent thickness. Next, I'm going to create the circles for my bottom loop, the outer one first. I need to make it so that all four anchor points rest on the grid intersection. I'm going to line up the rightmost anchor point with the bottom right anchor point of the stem. Then I'm going to scale it to match the grid. I do that by going to Edit, Transform, Scale, or simply by using the shortcut, Control T. Now I can create the inner circle. I'll need to adjust the scale and location, making sure the gap is two blocks wide like the rectangles. I'll also need to make sure the anchor points line up on the grid intersections like my outer circle did. Now I need to put it all together. I'll start by opening up the top of the circles. I'm going to click on the direct selection tool, or white arrow, from the toolbar. Now I'm going to drag a marquee around the top of both circles to activate only those two points. They're solid blue, letting me know they're active, while the others are hollow, letting me know they're inactive. Now I just hit delete to open up the circles. I need to close off the end of the loop with the pen tool. I click on one end to activate the path, then click on the other to close it off. With the path selection tool, or the black arrow, I'm going to select all the paths, then go to the options bar at the top. If your options bar is not showing, simply go to the window menu and select Options near the bottom. Now I go to Path Operations and click on Combine Shapes. Next I head back to Path Operations and select Merge Shape Components. My shape is now complete. The intersection of the two rectangles left behind two anchor points that I don't need. To delete them, I just need the pen tool and subtract them. Remember, as soon as I overlap an active anchor point, it automatically switches over to the Subtract feature. I want to center my J on the document. To do that, I head back to the option bar and select Path Alignment. I'm going to set Align 2 to Canvas, then simply click on Align Horizontal Center, and then Align Vertical Center. Lastly, I'm going to add Fill and Stroke to the letter. There are two ways to add Fill and Stroke. One way is to right-click on the path and select Fill Path. Go to the Contents menu and select Color Picker. You can right-click on the path to add stroke as well, but you'll need to set your brush tool and foreground color ahead of time. I'm going to set my brush size to 5 pixels and the hardness to 100%. The other way to add fill and stroke is use the Path Palette window. If you don't see your Paths palette on the right, go to the Window menu and select Paths. Select your foreground color from the color picker first. Then make sure your path is selected. Go to the Paths window and click on the Fill Paths button. 
Then just change your foreground color and set your brush size and hardness. Go back to the Paths window and click on the Stroke Path button. Again, the secret to creating shapes is to analyze what you need before you start. Determine the fewest number of points you need, then see how you can break down what you need to create geometrically. Use the shape tools first whenever possible, then fill the gaps and make connections with the pen tool. Good luck and enjoy!